and caught into this trap, also uh, pros uh, prostituted in the name of profit and wealth and material power, has desecrated its own story. But beneath it all, the simple facts of the relationship between divine power and nature, between the human being and the universe in which he lives, and between each of us and our own neighbors. These spiritualized realities must be the basis of the civilizations that must rise if we're going to end this mess that we have made for ourselves. And even where it's a little difficult now, all of us, to a degree, can stop this reform motion if we want to. We can't ask and don't ask people to break up their whole way of life to change something, but we can find nice things beginning to creep in. We can find a little more friendliness, a little more patience, a little deeper and more satisfying love. We will find that domestic grievances do not necessarily have to break homes, that there is always a way in which a greater love will mend a lesser one. There is no reason why we should be building always to defend ourselves against hate. These things, little by little, we can overcome in ourselves. We can reach out and cure a grudge that we've had for a long time. We can live within our means and not have the fear and anxiety of debt. We can give a little more time to the children if, they want to, if we want them to give a little more peace to us in later years. Everything can be done the moment we begin to put values where they belong. And until we put values where they belong, we're not going to get the results. And anyone who tells us that we can have a peace we have not earned, a prosperity that is not firm in our own achievements, that we can be happy without deserving it, that we can be healthy and break all the rules of food, that we can be robust and everything and at the same time be on narcotics. Any type of instruction that does not demand the correction of the faults that have caused the ailment, any such instruction and those who carry it on will be part of a comic load that they have to carry. For if we do what they make us do, or impel us to do, or advise us to do, and it is wrong, we will suffer. And because they have made us suffer, they will suffer too. There's no way around that perfectly frank, reasonable, natural fact. So we, each of us should stop trying to prevent suffering coming from us to anyone else. We must realize that we do not have to accept the wrong attitudes of other people. In many cases, we can transmute them. In any event, we can always meet them with a blessing regardless. They tell the story of the old monk in his cell who was copying a manuscript, and all of a sudden the devil came up through the floor. And the old monk was so busy working on his manuscript, they didn't even hardly look up. He just said, bless you, my son. <laughs> And when he looked up, it was an angel. <laughs> the difference was in himself. So until we know some better way of doing it, it's best perhaps for us to all bless each other and hope that we will not contribute in our own lives anything to the misfortunes of the world. Well, thank you very much, folks.